Welcome to CharCast, where we explore games and geek culture in the hills and hollows of West Virginia. This is going to be a shortened episode. We just wanted to put out one more before the actual uh, CharCon, which is coming up next weekend. And we're going to talk about some highlights and things you shouldn't miss. So with that said, we'll get right into it. Um, I'm Travis. This is Doug. Yeah. This is Dave. And our guest at this show is Ian. Ian uh, helps us out at Charcon. He's a friend of ours, and he's generally mostly an all-around good guy. And he is well-known for being a semi-pro at several things, right? Rugby, my mom. Rugby. Right? You're a semi-pro publisher. That's employee. true. You're a sem- I've made $4 on a book that I've written. Yep, you're a semi-pro Sem- podcaster, right? That is also true. You're, see, he's, you're semi-pro. That's he's general. I'm just semi-good at a lot That's of things. That's what the, the Will Ferrell movie was about you, right? Uh, I sure the movie was very funny. It's four dollars more on a book than I've made. So, hey, you haven't seen Semi Pro, you should see Semi Pro. That's my advice for the show. There we go. All right, so we're going to get right into some Charcon stuff. Number one, we've confirmed two food trucks to be there for uh, Saturday evening. They'll be showing up uh, about five o'clock. They are uh, the Fusion Teriyaki Restaurant, which is, has a permanent restaurant in Canal City, and Rolling Smoke, which has a permanent brick and mortar store in Big Chimney. Rolling, Ro- Ro- Rolling, sorry, Rolling Smoke. Rolling Smoke. So barbecue and teriyaki. So those are both. That's a great. What, what counts as Fusion Teriyaki? Uh, they do like noodles. They have like a reactor and, in it too. Yeah. That's how they cook it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the back. It's a mini reactor. It's in the back of the truck. Um, so those will both be there Friday evening. Everybody. Really wanted other few food options. So if you want food, want if you like the option, go buy food. Because if they make money, then we can continue to get them to come back year after year. And if they don't, then obviously it's not in their best interest to do that. We're still working on securing somebody for Friday night, and we'll let you know. Watch the Facebook page. Uh, number two, SDJ games. We talked about those at length, I think, in our first episode. We will have all of the Spiel des Jahres and Kenner Spiel nominees. There are six of those. In total, we will have all six of those available for play at this year's show. They are all available on demand, and there are also scheduled times when you can reserve a spot and play it so that you can count on that. Right. So, so look at the schedule. We'll keep a list up of when when there are scheduled events so that people will know that, okay, we need to wrap this game up or whatever. Most of them play pretty quick. At least four of them play in probably an hour. 30 minutes, so yeah. it doesn't take a long time to come play through most of them. Yeah, right. I haven't played um, Quacksalber, but I know Heaven and Nails the longer. Right. Heaven and Nails the longer one, probably Quacksalber. Play about 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think most of them you can play in an hour. Right. Much. Yeah. So definitely check those out. Next in the list, three uh, events that are very supportive of us, and we want to make sure you know about them. Artemis every year. Uh, Bill Wallace brings his Artemis set up. It's a spaceship uh, simulator. You and five of your friends can sit down and man a spaceship. One of you can be the captain, and you can be weapons and damage control and navigation. Engineering. Engineering. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it really does feel, you know, other than the fact that you're not leaving the planet. You feel like you're running <laughs> a spaceship. It's a lot of fun. Um, it does have a very low fee. I think he charges three or four bucks. It's, it's five, 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 five bucks. Five So it's definitely worth it. He'll be set up. Uh, in the same place all weekend. It'll be at one of the ends of the balcony on the, probably the second floor. So be sure to check that out. Um, and then two role-playing games, Metal Magic and Lore. They've been a supporter of our show for years. Uh, they actually attended, well, way back at the Civic Center probably six, seven years ago. Yeah. And they've got somebody coming again this year to run some of their games. So check that out. And also um, Adventures in Philbar. Um, they write uh, supplements for Dungeons & Dragons, and um, they wrote a uh, adventure that's specific to our theme just for Charcon. So it matches the Star Trek Star Wars theme, and it's going to be being run. Um, so check those out. They're supporters of the show. And uh, those two RPGs are a little off. They're not the mainstream Pathfinder stuff, so that's something uh, else you might want to consider. Uh, next thing, registration. By the time you watch this, it will probably will have closed. It's going to close midday on Monday. Um, if you have been waiting for day passes, like a Friday or Saturday, or visitors or kids, those will all be available on site. You can still register for weekend passes as well. If you missed out on pre-reg, it's going to be a little more expensive, five bucks more on site. But you can also get day passes and everything else. All the badges that we always have, those will all be available on site. Um, next, 
Friday night at 8.30, we will be showing Rebel One. That's been all over our Facebook. Rogue One. Rogue One. Sorry, Rogue One. <laughs> running through stuff. <laughs> really? um, well, it's been all over our Facebook and Twitter and everything. So, um, But just a reminder, it's going to be at 8.30. It'll be in the planetarium at the Clay Center on the big screen. Um, so be sure to plan on watching that if you're interested. If you've got friends or family or like your wife or kids aren't interested in coming to the convention, but which, they want to see which the they movie, should be. They should want to come to yeah. the convention, yes. Then this is a good way for you to get them to come out because then you can get them a visitor's pass. They can check out all the vendors and the games, and then they can go to the movie because uh, admission to the movie is included with any type of Charcon admission, and including you, visitors. You can always upgrade that visitor's pass if you want to. Right. And so if they have fun. They yeah. feel great and stay yeah. and play games. You, you, you know. say, I'm just come for the movie, and hey, you stay for the game. That's right. That's right. right. And we do have a kid's area if people aren't aware of that. I, I don't think everyone... Oh, totally yeah. aware of that. Yeah, it's an excellent kid. Yeah, the kids area is always always jumping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, the next thing I have on the list is uh, just a quick thanks to some local restaurants that have supported the show this year. Corner Kitchen. They're located on the corner of Bigley and Westmoreland. That's good home cooking. I eat there pretty often. It's good stuff. Uh, Quaker Steak and Lube. They're very supportive of it this year. Chick Fil A and Panera, both in the Charleston Town Center. Those two restaurants have all been supportive of the show this year. So while you're at the show, uh, take the time to maybe go stop in and grab some food, or if not, check them out at some point when you're out and about. Um, that's all the stuff we had in our list. So now we're going to do something we haven't done. We're going to do a top five for me and Dave and Doug, and Ian's just kind of kind of pitch in as we go. We're going to list our top five things that we feel like uh, everybody should do while you're at Charcon. It's hard to do everything, so we're going to give you our top five. So we'll start with uh, Doug. All right, my number five is the raffle. Uh, it's one of the most popular things at the con. We have a ton of people showing up. I think everyone who's still there on Sunday when it happens drops what they're doing to participate. It seems it's pretty popular and a lot of great prizes every year. Uh, I never win anything, but I still have a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, the raffle's great. I mean, it basically, a lot of our sponsors, they give us prizes and vendors, so our vendors do, and everybody wins lots of stuff. Every, uh, I see a lot of other people win a lot of stuff. Yeah. I don't want yeah. to say no one wins anything, just me. <laughs> a lot of, We're sure you're going to win, right? Yeah. Ken Stamper wins a lot Ken of stuff. Stamper wins a lot of stuff every year. So Th This is the year he doesn't, though. And yeah. he doesn't mind that we mind. He's made that clear. <laughs> yeah, this is true. You know, uh, and we give Ken a hard time, but Ken takes that stuff home and puts it on a shelf in his basement and gives it away to people and gives it away as Christmas gifts. And I know he doesn't play a lot of it, but he does good things with from what I hear. And, he's, and he spends the money on the tickets, you and know. He sure does. Right. Yeah, absolutely. We appreciate Ken. My number five is the Star Wars movie, Rogue One. Um, I think that's neat. We've never done anything like that before. We're able to do that thanks to our Kickstarter back. It was a stretch goal on the Kickstarter. Speaking of which, you can see this awesome looking pint glass. It says Charcon 2018, Clay Center, Charleston, West Virginia, and it's got the West Virginia Gaming Convention. This is uh, all of our Kickstarter backers um, at, at a certain level and above are going to get these. Um, that's the only way you could have gotten them, so make sure you think about backing it next year. But thanks to all the support of our Kickstarters, we were able to offer a stretch goal to see the Star Wars movie on Friday night. Friday night, 8.30. So, uh, yep. that's my number five. Yep. So, uh, speaking of Star Wars, um, if you're into miniatures games, you should check out the Star Wars Legions demos we're doing. It's a new game from FFG. Uh, it's a skirmish level uh, miniatures game. So, uh, you know, they... Uh, FFG's what? I mean, they got uh, they got X Wing, they've got Armada, and now right. they have Legion. Re I mean, rebellion. they it, well, Rebellion, which that. is a well, as far as minis go, it's X Wing, Armada, and uh, right. Legion, and then Rebellion's a, their board game. For Star Wars. It's got nice yeah. miniatures still. Uh, yeah, it's got good. I mean, FFG's, and Imperial Assault's kind of close to. Yeah, well, I've been really interested in seeing how it compares to the skirmish game in Imperial Assault, right? And just how it works as far as a, maybe a simpler. Uh, non-template miniatures game. So I, I didn't know we were having demos, so I'd definitely be interested in checking yeah, it out. Yeah, so that's, that's well, going to be on one, Saturday. One of our staff guys, Buck, he paid power. He's already painted a set. He'll have it there and doing demos. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That's going to be on on Saturday on the main stage. So check that out. All right. Doug, number four. Uh, my number four is Charcon After Dark. Uh, I haven't been in a few years, but I'm hoping to go back this year. And uh, I don't know. Hopefully there's a dance contest again. I won the last time I went. <laughs> have you not been since Gangnam Style? I have not been since. Wow, Doug is Doug had a legendary whoop em Gangnam Style dance at our 
That was back when we used to do it on the boulevard in the old Spankies. That's a long time ago. That's a bit of a while. It was impressive. Doug was impressive. There were a lot of people up there dancing, including Dave Whalen just laying there in his hat. That was weird. <laughs> that, was, that was creepy. All right, my number four is our vendors. We have a lot of vendors. Some of them are returners every year. Sometimes we have new people. It's always a nice mix. Always look forward to seeing what all they're going to bring. And I like to see people shopping and happy to have found something that maybe they weren't able to find somewhere else uh, or that maybe you can't get around here. So uh, for me, number four is our vendors. Yep. So uh, now we've already mentioned the SDJ games. I'm going to mention it again just because we managed to get all six here, including... Uh, Die Quack Zauber von Quedlinburg, which has been very difficult to get in the States. I had so, to trade a kidney for it. Yeah, Travis was able to secure a copy for us. Did you take to the Quack of Quedlinburg? I did. That's right. Yeah, sure make so um, I'll be interested I, I'll be interested to see see how that game is. Cause One of those awards are getting announced in a couple of weeks, right? Middle of July? Yeah. Yeah, so you can you know, put, put your vote in, see if you can, yeah. you know, see if you're smarter than the SDJ committee. Yeah, sure. that's what we were just talking. We're going to, as you play those, we're going to track which one you think will be the winner. And at the end of the show, we'll kind of announce it and uh, see who our attendees think. Yeah, so I think that'll be interesting. Yeah. Okay. Doug, what do you got for number three? Uh, my number three is the play to win games. I think we need to get as many people as possible in there. We had some great sponsors, you know, uh, providing some good games for us to, to give away. So, just nobody play the games I want to win. Right. So right. Say, yeah. So yeah. It's the, easier. But it's called the EN play to win. 80, 80 plus games. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's wow. huge. Got a so. game you like. It's called Fruit. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's a lot of games to give away, so we need a lot of people playing, you know? That's yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like play to wins, too. My number three is, we've already hit on this one, is the raffle. Doug talked about the raffle. It's great. Uh, it wears me out on Sunday. We go through all those tickets and announcements and everything. But it's great to see people win stuff. Uh, they get excited. They come up. They want to get their picture taken. Uh, it, it's it's really awesome. And it really helps the show. Um, we, let some, we let our vendors, uh, some of them pay with product. Our sponsors pay with product. But obviously, we can't pay the play center with product. We have to pay them with cash. So the raffle is very helpful to the show. So anytime people are buying raffle tickets, they're helping us pay the bills for the show. Um, so that's all. That's a good. It's a, it's it's beneficial to the show. So we appreciate all the support. Um, yeah, I love I love the raffle. It's great. Yeah. So uh, my number three is uh, is Crokinole tournament. Um, if you're not familiar with Crokinole, it is a circular board, uh, and it's a flicking game. So you have these wooden discs and you're flicking them and you're, it's kind of like, you can imagine like circular shuffleboard where you're trying to get your pieces in the middle and score. So, right. As close um, to the middle rather than as close to the edge as possible. Right. So and our friends from Lexicon Chris, are going to be running. Chris and Meg Griswatz. Right. Griswatz. Who yes. run Lexicon. Yep. Lexicon. Convention of Lexicon. Yep. So, yeah. So, uh, um, that that's uh, that's going to be going on, and we may have a uh, a loop and chewy tournament too. That's right. So. That's right. Well, loop and chewy. Too. Loop and chewy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no no pies in the face. It's, I just saw a dice tower that uh, Bornacord got to put a pie in Basil's face. No no pie and they face. Had a mono e mono loop and Louie. Oh no thanks. Nope. Yep. Uh, yeah, Crokinole's two p.m. Saturday, right? I believe that's yeah, correct. They're yes. bringing some boards. We will also have the Charcon board on yep. hand, which is super nice if you haven't played it. I've never played Crokinole with anybody that didn't like it, so it's worth it. Yeah, just come have a good time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I've bought a couple people Crokinole boards as gifts over the years. You have a couple. You have a nice I've, personal board too. I've, I've got uh, two Helinskis myself. Yeah, Helinski brothers make nice boards. That's who made our Charcon, Charcon board. board. Yeah. Yep. All right, Doug, what do you got for number two? Uh, the Quick Draw event. What is it? JR and Friends Quick Draw. Yep. Uh, that was a great time last year, uh, you know, watching them draw things that people had selected for them to draw. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it, but I loved it. It's a great spectator event. Uh, if you want to just relax and laugh for a minute, it's really fun. Yeah, and you get some, I mean, I'm always amazed watching artists at work um, and the thing, I mean, I have no artistic talent whatsoever to see them knock this stuff out in 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, it just, it's amazing. And you can walk away with some really good art. And I've yeah. seen some pretty complicated requests like, uh, you know, the, the guy from Scream attacking Chucky on a tricycle. And, and Right. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what else, but I, 
I, I realized that a lot of them were crossovers and they, and they Zombie were, Hulk. Uh, they were obliging, very obliging. Yeah. The artists. Yeah, good, good stuff. Yeah. Uh, my number two has already been mentioned. It's Charcon After Dark. I uh, really like to have, uh, I enjoy myself at Charcon After Dark. Yeah, of course, it's an opportunity for us to kind of unwind after a long weekend. Of course, we still have Sunday left. Um, this year, uh, it'll be a little different. Um, I think we mentioned on the last episode that it'll be in the hotel. Uh, we'll have a DJ and we'll have the Old Crow Karaoke Show hosted by Mike Maney, which you definitely don't want to miss. Um, <laughs> should be a lot of fun. Um, we've had it at just various places over the years, a couple of different bars. Uh, last year kind of wasn't what we wanted it to be, so we're kind of rebranding it. And, uh, we hope it's going to be a lot of fun. Again, we won't have any alcoholic beverages there, so you have to bring your own. It's the hotel. They don't have a bar. So whatever you want to bring, we will have some soda and juices and things like that. But my, that's for me, that's number two. I know Dave's, Dave is one of the troopers who doesn't stay real late at After Dark, and he's run part of, part of the staff running the show on Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Because most yes. of us are not there at the crack of dawn. That's, that's, my, uh, <laughs> that's my designated. I'm the designated driver of After <laughs> Dark, morning. apparently. Yeah, Sunday morning. Um, my number two uh, is, uh, is the, the Pathfinder event on Saturday at 7, uh, Assault on Absalom. If you're into role playing, if you're into Pathfinder, that's a that's like a, a mega event. There's going to be ten, at least ten tables, um, ranging from levels one to level eleven, and um, all of them are fighting against a common enemy. But what happens in one table or one set of tables is going to affect what happens in another set of tables. I'm not sure of all the interactions, but it seems like it's pretty cool. I know at Gen Con they do one that has a thousand people in it. Right. This is obviously much smaller scale, but kind of right. the same cool. concept. So. Yeah, they, I know they use a projector and they've got a screen and they project. It's like a city or wherever it is. And this things happen and change. They update it so that everyone right. can see what's going on. Yeah, so you might get a, a, a tougher an enemy if, you, if you're not doing so well in this section or something like that. I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. sure there's rules all around it. I That's mean, cool. Yeah. It's, it's is pretty, it friendly to new players? Like, do you have to be a Pathfinder? Yeah. Uh, Pathfinder Society play is very friendly for new players. You can come in and have pre-made characters, or you can make your own. Right at first level, they'll teach you how to play. You play that character, and then you can keep playing, and you don't have to keep that pre-made. You can take that experience, put it towards whatever character you want. You can keep playing second, third, fourth. Yeah, you can start right with that one or any point during the weekend. Heck, if you start on Friday by Saturday night, you <laughs> might have a third, second, third, fourth level character. Yeah. Because. Yep, because okay. there's a lot of Pathfinder all weekend. Yep. All right, number one, Doug, what do you got? Uh... You know, I thought about making my m- making you guys roll your eyes and saying play Twilight Imperium with me, but uh, I think <laughs> I think my real number one is just checking out the board game library. That's that's the reason that I went before I was on the staff. That's still always my favorite thing. We work hard to bring a good selection of quality games. Uh, you know, beyond beyond our sponsored games and everything, every year we have a lot of games that people have wanted to try and haven't gotten to try. We've got people to teach hundreds of games, so. That's that's my favorite thing every year. I think it's the best thing to check out. Well, my number one is playing Twilight Imperium 4 with Doug. Hey. <laughs> no, in reality, my number one has already been mentioned also. It's the JR and Friends Quick Draw. I think that event last year was great. It's an event you should not miss this year. Everybody who attended it had fun. Uh, basically, the flow of it is we have four artists that will be up in the front of the room with some big... Uh, drawing pads. Everyone that comes in gets a ticket. The bar is open so you can get yourself a beer or a drink or whatever you'd like to have. You sit down. There'll be a, some acoustic music playing during the event, which is thanks to uh, the Kickstarter backers. And we'll draw tickets out. Whoever's ticket we draw, they get to suggest a topic. It can be something mm-hmm. basic. It can be something crazy like they mentioned, you know, Zombie Hawk or who knows what, right? Mickey Mouse, Darth Vader. Right, all kinds of whatever. crazy stuff. Right. So once they've all got topics, um, they get 10 minutes to draw, and we put them on the clock, and we all get to watch them create those things. At the end of 10 minutes, whoever suggested the topic gets the option to buy the drawing, and if they don't want it, then we put it out for anybody else that'd like to buy it, and last year they all sold. So the artists make a little bit of money for their time, too. But it was a great event. I would say it's at 7 o'clock on Friday in the Founders Lounge. It would make a great pre-seeing-the-movie event. So come in there, have a couple of cocktails, 
check out uh, the quick draw and then go to the movie. So that's my number one. Are they all semi-pro artists? Uh, actually, <laughs> I think they're all just regular pro. Actually, I think there are at least three of well. At least two of them are professional artists. Yeah, semi semi pros are the best. We already established. Uh, I, I guess Maney is now a semi pro artist because he took a job. Yeah, he caved. So he's just, but he's semi pro to a lot of things. <laughs> and then Jr. is the other one, and I, I I don't think Jr. only does art. I think he does some other stuff too. Well, I think Mike's a pro karaoke host at least, right? He's a professional karaoke. Especially so when an old old pro is involved. That's right. Yep. So uh, so my number one. Um, is uh is basically just come and have a good time i mean another thing is it's just just <laughs> you, you just visit all the people i mean i know when i go to conventions over the years it's been when i first was going it was always a you know game 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 how many games can i play right. how many new games can i play um and these days it's more about uh just seeing people that i don't get to see but maybe once or twice a year at a convention yeah, it's so, like a, it's like a family. Right? Yeah, it really is. So um, it's good to see those people. Yeah, you know, and and we have our regulars who show up every year. Yeah, cool people I, from out of state coming in. Yeah, oh, we did well. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but no. So really, come have a good time. Um, if there's games you want to bring, uh, feel free. You know, we have open gaming. You can sit down, play a game with your friends or uh, or new friends. And, uh, you know, have a, just have a good time at Charcon this year. I think yeah. if you just plop a game out, people will often walk by and at least ask you about it. They might not sit down with you, but more often than not, you give it 15 minutes and you'll have a, a full house, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, before we, before we, uh, uh, I'm going to give one more thing. I'm going to cheat. Uh, we do have a social deduction room. Uh, where we're going to have all kinds of social deduction games. Right. So, Coup, The Resistance, uh, Werewolf, Vampire, uh, a few others that, uh, that that I can't think of right at the moment. But that's going to be going on throughout the weekend, hosted by the uh, the fabulous James Ferris. Right. We also have a standalone game that's coming just to show their game off. That'll be on that's the right. of January, right? Blood, Blood on the Blood Clock, on the clock Tower. Tower. Yeah, Blood, Blood on the, the Clock, clock Tower. Tower. So, Which yeah. sounds like a lot of fun. So. Well, that's going to be that's yeah, a great title. Starter. Yeah. That's all I know about it. Yeah, we're actually going to be raffling. Yeah, you can yeah. win a click Kickstarter pledge for that. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. All right, so that's our top five. We covered all the new uh, new stuff on Charcon. Before we go, we're going to talk about another popular topic, which is not necessarily related to Charcon and it, but it has been super popular, and everybody's talking about it in West Virginia, and that is Fallout 76. So uh, if you didn't hear, I don't know what you may be sleeping <laughs> under a rock or something. But yeah, Ian, yeah. Uh, Fallout wow. 76 is going to take place in West Virginia. Uh, it's another going to be another great game in the Fallout series. Um, I know it's been very hyped up recently. They just today, uh, the day we're filming this. There was a meet and greet at Camden Park, which is one of the locations in the game where people went in costume and all sorts of stuff. I saw some video footage of that. It looked like people were having a lot of fun. So was Bethesda there or was that no, fan, fans in Camden Park hosted? I think it's just Camden Park. Capitalizing. Yeah. Now, Camden hey. Park, I mean, Camden <laughs> Park may have known they were going to be in the game because obviously they had images it was very well recreated. You watched, yeah. The, you watched the trailer. Yeah, I watched the yeah. trailer. I used to love Cannon Park as a kid. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, they may have known, and maybe planned it. Maybe Bethesda. Maybe they'd work with Bethesda. I don't know, but. There was a bunch of people there, I know, when I saw the footage. So you, you're not familiar with Camden Park, but it, I mean, it's an old amusement park, and I mean, I okay. used to go there all the time. It's like a permanent theater. carnival with yeah. literal death-defying tr- thrills. Like there's a, a roller coaster I there mean, that's like 150 years. The, old. I mean, there's a good roller coaster. You need like at least a three percent chance of well, dying. Well, well, this thing, higher. this thing's got a. The serious uh, visible sway to it, boards best. falling off. What's it called? The cyclone? No, it's, like, it's the big dipper. The big dipper. Big dipper. Yeah. And all it does is go back and forth, but it's still terrifying. No, 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 no. You're thinking you, no. uh, uh, Screaming Demon. Yeah. You're the, thinking the one that does the loop back and forth? No. Uh, the big dipper is a, you mean a it just goes, over, it's a traditional wooden traditional roller coaster. Wooden People roller. actually come to ride it specifically because it is a traditional wooden roller right. coaster. The one that I liked, they had a, a log ride. Basically, the the water was swampy though. <laughs> it was it was pretty great. I loved it as a kid. I didn't care about the water. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the bumper cars. So, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to to see what it. I mean, you know, actually. Oh yeah, it'll be cool. They have the sign. It's it was a sign of the happy clown. 
but it's got that Fallout character on there. It's a cat or something, I right. think. I think the thing that I'm curious about is they, they've they mentioned all of these spots in, in the state that are three, four hours apart. What's the scale of the game going to be? Well, is they, it going to be condensed? That, they said that it was supposed to encompass 17 square miles. So obviously, for, to get right. from some of the other places mentioned are Greenbrier, which is down near Lewisburg, and you've got some stuff in Morgantown, and you've got some stuff in Huntington. Three opposite obviously, corners of the state. Obviously, in the you can't get from the, those three in that small of a space. So I'm sure that they are creatively re, rearranging uh, the geography. Right. I, I guess I was just wondering if, if they were physically closer, you know, condensed, or if there were some, t- some sort of clusters of uh, oh, there's maps. always been fast like travel, travel. Game, so. so is it actually is it set in North west virginia or is it yes is it the, set in a so have you played any of the fog i've never played fallout right. so in fallout um of course there's a nuclear war and this is what happens after but there was this company called vault tech that built these vaults that people went in like a fallout shelter right um and I don't want to run too much for you, but some of them were just plain old vaults that were meant to house people and do good for them. And some of the other ones were other things. So one of the vault was a vault in West Virginia called Fallout Se- Vault 76. So in each game, it's about uh, the survivor comes from a different vault. And in this one, they will come from 76. So it's actually set. Supposed the to answer be set is yes. There, okay. There's yeah, one I mean, set in D.C., one set okay. in Vegas, and yeah. it's it's Boston was the last one. Years ahead of now, right? Yeah. Wasn't so the, the one in Boston. So yeah. Apparently, in the well, future, West Virginia will be 17 square miles. Well, some of the yeah, the some of right. the uh, I mean, some of the some of the things that you'll see, you'll see uh, the the New River Gorge Bridge, you'll see the Greenbrier, you'll see West Virginia University, you'll see Camden Park, as we've already mentioned, the Capitol. Um, Some of those so, other places excite me more. I like to go uh, to Mothman. Uh, I like to go to the Grafton Counter Grafton Monster. Monster. Um, the Grafton Monster. Is one. Yeah. I, I was just in Point Pleasant. I crossed that bridge. It was not scary. <laughs> Are you well, familiar with the Mothman? I have no idea. There's a movie. He's a Richard, gi- Gere. Richard Gere. He's a giant moth dude who tells the future about tragedies. Yeah. There's a festival every year in Point Pleasant. Where are you from? I'm sorry. I, I missed all these. <laughs> have you been to the New River Gorge? I don't even know what that is. It's, it's like a, a terribly long... I'm from an incredibly a, tall a arch bridge. Land, but we don't have the New River like is gorges a, is like two isn't feet it, the New River is the, the oldest river, one of the oldest rivers in the world, right? Yes, and it yeah. also is one of the it flows north. Flows north, which is unusual. Right. It's, um, and it's a great whitewater rafting. They release a couple of lakes into it. And there's a famous bridge there that people jump off of. You could fit, I think, on the diagram well, it shows you could fit the. Uh, they, they don't. They don't. They take a they, step they, back. They they, <laughs> they, they, they base they, jump. They have okay. an event there called Bridge Day, and on Bridge Day, they it's organized and people can base jump off of the bridge. Right. Yeah. Okay. But at any other day, <laughs> it's not, it's not, not okay. Hurts. Right. Right. No. Right. But there's beautiful <laughs> waterfalls and things to check out on on the roads below it. And it's, I believe it's as tall as like two of the Statue of Liberty or like a couple of the Washington it, Monuments, something it's like that. The, the highest uh, uh, single span arch right. bridge in Facts about West Virginia Eastern geography United brought to you by Charcon 2018. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's just cool that, uh, that you see. I mean, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be interested to see, because um, the Greenbrier, if you've never been on the bunker tour, at the Green Bar, they, they had a. Is the bunker a, the vault? That's where, the, that's where they built the secret bunker that. Um, it was the presidential bunker. The, yeah, well, not just presidential. It, Congress. The, the they Senate. Had a full, they had a full place for the Senate, a full, a full, a mm. uh, full place for the House of Representatives. It's where everyone in Doctor um, Strange Love would have gone to. Right? Yeah. It, it was active and still secret up until what the nineties. Yeah, until the nineties. Until 90s. someone exposed it, and everybody it was the worst kept secret in that part of the state because all the people worked on it. Well, so they all knew that it kind of existed. So eventually, it, it got out. There was a people that basically what happened was that a reporter started doing some digging, and he's like, "Isn't it strange that you have a rail, major rail line that moves here, and that it comes through here, and you get this interstate that makes this unusual turn into this area, and they have an airport." that can land a 747 in Greenbrier County, you know, and, and like, just thanks, some other dude. clues. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and so they, the, he said that he was going to expose it and the government said, no, please don't. He did it anyway. And now it's um, a casino. And now the it's a end. casino, yeah. 
Yeah, but I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with that. It's got to be in there somehow. Oh, well, I mean, the, the green briar is in there. Well, the green briar well, is in the there, vault, but the vault though, has got to be Is it going to be related to vault well, tech? I'm, I'm sure that the uh, button bottom plot. So it, it's, right been, so it's been suggested that the um, that the green briar looks like it's it's part of, oh, what's the faction? Um, they were in Fallout 3. They weren't really in Fallout 4. Uh, the Iron Brotherhood? No, it's, no. The, it's the government <laughs> continuum. Oh, I can't believe I, I can't. Yeah, they, I forget that. They were the now. big opponents in Fallout 3. Anyway, it's suggested that that might be the beginning of them, that they went there and held, and held out there, and they, they lived in the in the bunker below. Um, I'll think of it as soon as we kind of quit filming. But um, <laughs> uh, it's suggested that that was like one of their strongholds. Um, so anyway, that's there. Uh, you mentioned all the monsters. I think it's going to be neat. It's going to be a online multiplayer game. That'll right. be interesting to see how they're going to do that. Right. Uh, they've talked about instead of playing with hundreds of players, you're playing with dozens of players. So they're making twenty four. That's the way a lot of games. Yeah, but when you get se- when you get seventeen square miles, I, I mean, yeah, you'll be close, but it still gives you plenty of room. Yeah, and when you do run into each other, you know, maybe you have a skirmish, but. If you really get in, into it with somebody, apparently you can collect the codes and shoot nukes at them and nuke them. So that'll be interesting. Why not? Yeah. Right. Anyway, that's exciting for West Virginia. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of the people that might be watching this are also excited about it. A lot of crossover between video games and board games and tabletop games in general. So uh, that's Fallout. Yep. What kind of games do you play in video games? Uh, my PhDs aren't really great for... Uh playing a lot of video games but uh i mean i are also a semi-professional student also a semi if by semi-professional you mean i pay other people to uh, uh i used to play a lot of rts i've been playing a lot of age of empires 3 actually right. just uh just pulled that one back out of the vault and uh and um uh, been playing a lot of ticket to ride on steam for some reason recently just got the map pack but uh yeah i don't play a lot of video games anymore yeah, but yeah, I don't play a lot of them. But yeah, looking forward to Fallout. There you go. Yep. All right. Have anything else? No, I think see, that'll do right. it. Well, that'll be able to do it for this episode. We will see you guys at Charcon, July thirteenth to the fifteenth, at Clay Center, and we'll see you on our next episode. Take care.